Solutions up for uh, <clears throat> for what was it eight seven eight seven wait no eight six and I did post them this morning but uh, I didn't finish them because I went to go do the videos yesterday and the the room that I usually use they had they were doing interviews for faculty positions in that room so they're like you have thirty five minutes in that room and so. I did as much as I could in 35 minutes, but I had to stop in the middle of a problem. So what I'm going to do today <clears throat> is I'm going to pick up doing a couple of things in 8.6, then we're going to do 8.7, it's going to be very fast, because it's just going to be a couple of formulas, and then what we're going to do is prove identities, and we're going to do it the way we did it that one time, where we do groups around the room, okay? The bad news with that is I'm not going to give you all really any examples. So you're just, you're just going to have to use all the formulas that you've been given, and you're going to have to try and figure out some of these identities. But you're going to work together, and it's going to be a quiz grade based upon participation. So, all right? 79 from the homework. For 8-6? Gladly, yes. Okay, so I'm being asked to do number 79 from the homework. Which is good because I did not get to this on the video. So I'm very glad you asked about this question. Because oh, and the directions here to solve this equation on the interval 0, 2 pi. So solve this on 0 less than or equal to theta less than or just less than pi. So solve this equation. So the reason why I'm glad you asked about this is because it has in it tangent 2 theta. And I never gave you a formula for tangent 2 theta, did I? I never, I never put it on the board over there, did I? But they are in the book. I just said that when I'm, doing t when I'm trying to find tangent of 2 theta, I usually just do sine of 2 theta over cosine 2 theta. This is one particular case where you could do that, or you could use the formula in the book. So I'm going to refer you to, yeah, did I give you the, I didn't give you the doubling. Yeah, it, it is in the, uh, it is in the book, right? Okay. So. Did, now, I want to help you on this. Is that what you did, or did you use sine, sine 2 theta over cosine 2 theta? No, we did the 2 tangent over Okay, so let's do that. Let's do that. So according to the book, and this is on page 657, this is actually 2 tangent theta over 1 minus tangent squared theta. Right? That's what you used? plus 2 sine theta equals 0. So that, that is, I agree, yes. Now, can I ask you what you did next? Uh, put the two, time, uh, 2 sine theta over 1 and try to find a common denominator. So you got a common denominator. That's not a bad idea. OK, so let's say if we look at this as being over 1 and then try and put those together, you're going to have to multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by 1 minus tangent squared theta. All right, does everyone agree that that is a legitimate algebraic move? We can do that? Okay, so let's try that. So we have 2 tangent theta over 1 minus tangent squared theta plus 2 sine theta over 1 times 1 minus tangent squared theta over 1 minus tangent squared theta equals zero. So that's, that's the original problem rewritten, introducing this nice one, right? This is a one so we can get a common denominator. And that will make it so our next line will have the same denominator of one minus tangent squared theta. The numerator will be two tan theta. And then you have to distribute this through. Right? So what do you get there? 2 tan theta plus 
2 sine theta minus 2 sine theta tan theta squared. Okay, so you, starting from the beginning, yeah. That's fine. I'm going I'm to put it in the order it appears here. And minus 2 sine theta tan squared theta. Tan squared theta. Okay, equals 0. So that's just 2 sine theta times 1, 2 sine theta times negative tangent squared theta. You just slap it next to the tangent. Is that all right? All right, not looking pretty. But uh, it is what it is, right? Now, something that uh, I should point out here that I, I may or may not have said before, but I will definitely state this. I actually talked about this in my Cal 1 class the other day, reminded them that if, you ever, if you're ever looking at a fraction, A over B, if you ever have a fraction equal to, to uh, 0, then all you ever have to do is consider when the numerator is 0. Let's try and understand that. If a fraction is 0, then the only thing you have to look at is the numerator being 0. Why? Look at this equation up here. If you were trying to solve this equation, the only way it could be zero. that is the only way it could be 0. But can you tell me algebraically what I could do to get from here to here? Multiply, by B. multiply both sides by b. If I multiply this side by b and this side by b, the b's cancel and you get a equals 0 times b is 0. So a over b equals 0 really just breaks down to meaning a is 0. So I have a over b is 0, right? a over b is 0. So all I really have to do is look at the top. <coughs> okay, and that's what you did. Or did you do that? or No? Okay. Let's see if that helps. That still may not help, but let's see how, how it goes from here. So from here I have 2 tangent theta plus 2 sine theta minus 2 sine theta tangent squared theta equals 0. Is that all right? Just set the numerator equal to 0. How about I divide everything by 2? Notice everything has a 2 in it, right? Everything has a 2. So can't I just divide out this 2, divide this 2 out, divide this 2 out, and then divide 0 by 2, which gives us 0 still. So is that fair? Just trying to make it a little easier to work with. Wow. All right. What now? Any ideas? Tan squared theta, you could change into something else. What could we change it into? You could do sine over cosine. Should we try and make everything sine and cosines? Yeah. Let's try that. What is, what is this right here? Tangent is sine theta over cosine theta plus sine theta minus sine theta times sine theta Oh, sine squared theta over cosine squared theta equals zero. Is that the same? Tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared. I could also extend this division bar. That division bar could be extended out because that's really sine over one. I'm, I'm trying to help have you help lead me through this here. I mean, I know what I want to do next, but do you have an idea of what you might want to do? Hmm? Denominator, get a common denominator again? You could. I agree, we could put the common denominator together right now. I'm going to do a little different, though, okay? Instead of a common denominator, I'm actually going to multiply both sides by the LCD, by the, by the greatest common denominator, sorry, not... LCD, GCD, because that's essentially the same thing. We could have done that earlier when we got a common denominator. We could have just multiplied both sides by that. Yes? I'll ask it again. You'll ask it again? At the end. Oh, at the end. I thought you said you'll ask it again. I was like, I didn't hear you the first time. 
Okay, so what would be the thing that I'm rewriting sine theta as sine theta over one? Could I, what would I multiply both sides of the equation by to get rid of fractions here? Cosine squared, right? If I multiply this by cosine squared, one of the cosines will cancel. That by cosine squared, something will happen. This by cosine squared, the cosine squared will cancel. Is that okay? So I multiply this side by cosine squared theta, this side by cosine squared theta. All right, so what does the first term here become? Cosine theta times sine theta plus, what does this one turn into? Cosine squared theta sine theta. And then this last one, what does that turn into? Minus sine cubed theta equals zero. Yeah, we're close. We're close. Do y'all see where all that came from? Yes. Okay, because uh, when you did the cosine squared here and here, right, the cosine squared here canceled with this cosine squared. So all you're left with is the sine theta and the sine squared theta. When I put those two together, I get my sine cubed theta. Thank you for asking. Is that the first time you've asked a question? Thank you. Appreciate that. I meant that sincerely. If that came across, okay, I mean, I, I want people to ask questions, but I can't force you to ask questions. Yes? So you can take the reciprocal, uh, you can take, um, multiply both sides by 1 over sine and knock out a sine? That's multiply fine. both sides, by, ooh, dang, okay. You can factor out a sine. Let me show you why that's dangerous real quick. <laughs> Let's just say we have this equation right here, okay? This is a, just a little quadratic equation. Okay. I could divide both sides by x here. Okay, so if I divide that by x, I get x. Divide that by x, I get 1. Divide that by x, I get 0, right? So then you get x is 1, right? And that is a solution. 1 squared minus 1 works, but you're missing 1 now. 0 is a solution also. So the way you would have gotten that is if you pulled the x out, then you would have set them each equal to 0. So when, yeah, when you divide both sides of an equation, by something that contains a variable, you might lose a, sol you might lose a solution. So you have to be very careful if you're, the, if you're dividing through. Yes, dividing very careful. If you don't have control over it, you don't know what it is. Like you can divide both sides by four, that's no problem. Right. But if it's something that involves a variable, you're, you might possibly lose an answer that way. So the, what's better is to factor GCF. Pull, so do you want me to pull a sign? I'll pull a sign. Okay, I'm pulling a sine, I got cosine theta here, I've got plus cosine squared theta here, and I've got over here minus sine squared theta. Oh, well, okay. That's where we are, look, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. That's where we are, all right? Any ideas now? You want to put it back? <laughs> I, I'm happy to put it back. Any ideas there? Could you then change uh, cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta to cosine two? Theta. theta. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta is cosine two theta. Yeah. The reason why I'm a little bit hesitant to do that is that then I would have a cosine two theta in here, and everything else has thetas, not two thetas. Now, now I still think we could get it that way, but I, I'm hesitant. The cosine squared theta, you can change that to something with sine, right? And yes, but how about we do this one instead? Yeah, so you can, can we change sine squared theta into one minus cosine squared theta? Why don't we do that? Let's do this, and let's change that into one minus cosine squared theta. That's a Pythagorean identity, right? But there's a minus in front of it. Okay, so that's gonna distribute. So here's where we are. We've got sine theta, what a problem. Okay, sine theta, cosine theta 
plus cosine squared theta, and then minus 1 plus cosine squared theta. I think hopefully you're about to see it. Hopefully it's going to work out. This is sine, sine theta, and then let's put this like in a descending order. How many cosine squareds do we have? Two cosine squared thetas. And then we have one cosine theta in the middle, and then a minus one like that. Does this factor like a quadratic? It looks like a quadratic, doesn't it? Like 2u squared plus u minus 1, like, like 2u squared minus uh, plus u minus 1. Does that factor? 2u, u, does it? Plus 1 minus 1, does that work? Do y'all see 2u squared plus u minus 1? Do y'all see that here? Okay, so is this the factorization of that? You get 2u squared, 2u, take away u, that's u, and then minus 1. So it does factor that way. So this becomes sine theta, and then there's two factors here. What are they? 2 cosine theta, minus 1, and then cosine theta, plus 1. And we're pretty much there at this point because we can set each of these equal to zero. Yes. Okay, we're going to keep going. I just feel like there's a more efficient way through this one. But I was kind of following the lead. Uh, let's go here. So I'm going to set sine theta equal to zero. I'm going to set 2 cosine theta minus 1 equal to zero. And I'm going to set cosine theta plus 1 equal to 0. And let's see, that one's already done. This one's cosine theta is a half. And this one is cosine theta is negative 1. So I'm looking at these three scenarios right here. Now this problem did ask for just the solution between 0 and 2 pi. That's all it wanted. I normally ask for general solutions, don't I? Like, so I'm going to do general solutions first. What are the general solutions for sine of theta is 0? So where is it? Zero. 0 and pi, right? So that's the general solution for that equation, which we would write theta equals n pi, n pi. You just start here at 0 and then just start adding pi's to get around. Where is cosine theta 1 half? So that means where is the x coordinate a half? Up here and down there, right? Those are not directly across from one another, so you have to have two sets of general solutions for this. Theta is this one, which is pi over 3 plus 2 pi n, and the one on the bottom, which is, what is that? 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And then finally, this one, cosine is negative 1. Cosine is the x coordinate, which is here, right? We already have that in this set of solutions, don't we? This already covers th that answer. So if I'm just looking for the answers between 0 and 2 pi, which is what the, what the book wanted, my only answers are 0, right, pi over 3, pi, 5 pi over 3. So 0, pi over 3, pi, 5 pi over 3. Does that match what they have? The solution is somewhere, right? Yep, 0 pi over 3, five, uh, pi, and 5 pi over 3. Now, would you like to re-ask your question? My question is going to be, since we were trying to solve this equation, uh -huh. we got everything down to finding cosine anyways, wouldn't it be easier to just start with that, replace the tangent of 2 theta with the tangent of 2 pi, and then sine sine over cosine? cosine? You could have, yes. Would that have been easier, do you think? Uh, the question is, would it have been easier in the beginning 
to have replaced it with sine, it would have been two theta, right? Sine two theta over cosine two theta. I don't necessarily think it would have been easier. Um, just look at what that would have looked like. Sine two theta, I mean, sorry, uh, tangent of two theta. I'm just gonna look at that one piece. If we look at that as sine two theta over cosine two theta, then that's gonna be um, two sine theta, cosine theta. That's our double angle formula for sine two theta over any one of three different formulas for this one. So which one did, would you wanna use? that would be up to you at this point. And so I think that part right there would start to create some issues. That would be your common denominator. I don't see that as being any easier. Plus the formula from the book, they take that and they simplify, it's basically this expression simplified already for you. All right, have I addressed the question? It's a good question. I, like I said, I didn't get a chance to do that in the homework video, so now I have. So I would encourage you to maybe try number 80 now if, if you want to you know, have a problem to practice, try number 80. Um, all right, Any, uh, anything else? All right, there's, there's a particular problem in this section, again in the homework that I didn't get a chance to finish that I'd like to talk about. But before I do it, I, I just want to point something out that maybe isn't obvious, so I'm going to just stress it again. Let's take a look at this formula, sine, sine of two theta equals two sine theta cosine theta. All right, that is our double angle formula. I, I gave that to you, what, two classes ago? I mean, we did it last class, but I think I actually gave it to you before that. For this formula, um, what would sine how could we rewrite sine of four theta using this formula? This would be two sine two theta cosine two theta. So what you're doing here, what, you're, what I'm trying to get you to see is that this four theta is really two times two theta. And so if we use this formula, replacing theta with two theta, we get this. So because that can be a little confusing, here's a way that I want you to look at it. Sine of two times a box, it doesn't matter what's in that box, all right, is equal to two times sine of the box, cosine of the box, regardless of the box, okay? That's kind of a more general, generic way of saying it. So this four theta, I rewrote that as two times a box. So it's two times sine of the box, cosine of the box. Good or no? All right. This works the same way with the cosine formulas. So if you have cosine of two times a box, you can rewrite that as cosine squared box minus sine squared box. And then there's, there's two other formulas that you could do, right? Okay, I hope you're following that's a, kind of a generalization. Now the reason I'm bringing that up is because on number 47, what they ask you to do in number 47 is this. They say take this expression sine of five theta and rewrite that expression where all you have in it at the end of the day is sine of thetas in it. So somehow transform that from sine of five theta to an expression without sine of five theta, instead sine of theta. So that the argument transforms from five theta to theta. So here's, here's how we go about it. It's, it's kind of messy. It seems like a pretty simple idea, but it, it takes a while to get to. So, for, <laughs> sorry, I cracked myself up. We, we, <laughs> we cannot do that, right? Sorry, that is like, that's like, you get negative points on your test for that. Like I take away more than I'm supposed to. 
You cannot just factor a 5 out of a, out of a sine function, right? Life would be way too easy if this is the way it worked. All right. That's not what I was cracking up about. I was cracking up about something else. Because <laughs> that's not funny. All right, so let's try and do this. How about, how about I try and lead you through this one? Could I do that? And then think about why I would want to do that. Why break it up that way, you know? Do we have a formula for sine of alpha plus beta? Yes, it's sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine sine. You know about, all right, you got that? So this is going to be like my alpha and my beta. So this should be sine theta cosine what? Four theta plus what? Sine four theta cosine theta. Okay, that is our that is our sum formula for sine, right? So what have I achieved in using that formula? I have a new expression, right? It has, it has sine theta in there, yay, but it has a bunch of other stuff. I need this final expression to just have sine thetas in it, just sine thetas. So is there a way that I can get rid of this cosine four theta, this cosine theta, and that, and somehow get those to be sine thetas? So here's, we're going to try, right? How can we break down cosine of 4 theta? I just showed you this a second ago. Well, we could look at that as being 2 times 2 theta. Right? So I'm gonna, let me do this on the side here. If I'm trying to break down cosine of 4 theta, I'm looking at that as cosine of 2 times 2 theta. So that's kind of like my junk right there, right? My box. So what formula for the double angle for cosine should I use? Because there's three of them. Which one should I use? One minus two sine. Yeah, the one with the sines in it, right? Because I'm trying to get everything to sines. So I'm going to go one minus two times sine squared of what? Y'all know what formula I'm using? Yes? Sine squared of what? Two theta. Do y'all do y'all see this or not? That one of the formulas that you written down on the test. It should have been. Yep, I did write that down. The formula, the way I wrote it, was this. It was cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Uh, no, so, uh, sorry, whoa, whoa, what the heck am I doing? 2 theta. Okay, cosine 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, and that should be on your formula sheets also, right? But the thing is, I don't have 2 theta, I have 4 theta. So I'm going to basically be doubling that, so that's going to become 2 theta instead. That okay? Sure? Sure, that's an agreeable sure, or sure, <laughs> yes? I, I guess I'm, I'm back where when you did your initial breakdown between uh -huh. theta and four theta, mm -hmm. why didn't you just do two theta plus two theta? Could you have done that? Well, it's where? Here? here or? Yeah, sign of, yeah, right there in the breakdown, the original. So, so alpha would be two theta and beta would be two theta? Oh, two theta and two theta? Yeah. But so that would add up to be four theta, and it's five theta. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, trust me, if that would have been 4 theta, I would have done okay, yeah. 2 and 2, and then we would have been Never in business. Mind, yeah. 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 Addition. yeah. <laughs> Good question, though. Good Sorry question. I'm back. I'm back on track. <laughs> Everyone's okay? All right, so that's how we're going to rewrite this, right? How can we rewrite this piece, sine of 4 theta? That's... That's the same as sine of 2 times 2 theta again. So that's going to become 2 sine 2 theta cosine 2 theta. Again, I'm using the double angle formula, but I'm using it for 4 theta instead of 2 theta. So what happens is instead of having thetas here, we have 2 thetas. What if, what if this was 6 theta? What would be here? 3 theta and 3 theta. Okay. 
But this two never changes. This two always stays the same. All right, so I know what this is going to become. And let me rewrite this then. This is sine theta times 1 minus 2 sine squared 2 theta. That sucks. And then plus 2 sine 2 theta cosine 2 theta times cosine theta. So here's my sine. This becomes that. That becomes that. Cosine theta is on the end. Have I transformed this into an expression with just sine thetas in it? Nope, I've got a cosine two theta, I've got a sine two theta, I've got a sine two theta, I've still got sine two thetas in there, right? I, I feel the same way about this problem that I did yesterday when I was trying to work out. This is very tedious at this point. This is just tedious work. I'm going to have to start using the formulas again. Let me first distribute this through, okay? All right, so here's where we are. We have sine theta minus 2 uh, sine theta times sine squared 2 theta plus 2 sine 2 theta cosine 2 theta times cosine theta. So when I distributed the sine through here, you get sine theta times 1 is sine theta. Then when you do sine theta times all of this, it just slaps on next to it. You cannot combine those together. Okay, help me with those sine 2 thetas and the cosine 2 theta. How can I rewrite that piece right there? What does that purple piece become? What's the formula for sine 2 theta? Two sine, theta. Two sine theta, cosine theta, right? But then it's going to be squared, isn't it? Mm -hmm. right. All right. Thus is life. Such is life. How do you say it? Such is life. Thus is life. Do you know what I'm talking about or no? Is that not a common saying? <laughs> Such is life. Such is life. Infam infamous last words of a girlfriend of mine once. Last words, well, that she spoke to me. <laughs> Not her last words ever. <laughs> All right. Y'all see what I did here? Sine 2 theta is this, right? But then I have to square it, so I'm going to have to square the entire expression. That's Such is life. Okay. And then I have 2 here sine 2 theta again, which is 2 sine theta cosine theta. Do you hate this yet? Okay, and then we have cosine 2 theta, but cosine 2 theta I can use one of three formulas to break it down. And I'm going to use the one that has this, the sine in it. So this piece right here breaks down to be, in parentheses, 1 minus 2 sine uh, squared theta. And then I still have a cosine theta on the outside. Oh, wow. OK. I can see you over there with your head in your hands. I'm trying. OK. Well, let me try and help, help you see what part of it are you. You see that this part right here is that. This part right here is that. And then, of course, this is that. And then that, too, is that right there. How did this become this? Yeah. Formula. Oh, that's right. That's our double angle formula. Sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. So notice the 2 thetas are becoming thetas, but, and then same thing with this one. So I'm using the formula. I had three options when it came to this formula. I chose this one because it has sine, sine in it. We all good? We're, I think we're getting close, all right? We're getting close. All right, so on this piece, I'm, I'm not going to do anything with this. I'm going to leave it out here, 2 sine theta. I'm going to actually square this expression. And because these are multiplications, I'm going to have to square each one. I square each of these. So it becomes 4 sine squared theta, cosine squared theta. 
And then here, I've got a big mess. Uh, these twos come together, I've got a four. Sine theta. I've got a cosine theta and a cosine theta, which is a cosine squared theta. And then I still have this one minus uh, two sine squared theta. I'm very close, I'm very close. Do I have everything now in terms of sine theta? O almost, right? I've got a couple of cosines in there, cosine squareds in there, don't I? Hmm? Don't I? Yes. Can you turn cosine squareds into sine squareds? You can turn cosine squared into one minus sine squared, can't you? Who needs assistance on where I got any of that? Sure? Oh, one minus sine squared theta. There we go. What? I don't know if I missed Where did the cosine theta go again? One minus sine squared. This one right here? This one joined that one. Because this is multiplication, and I just put it as a cosine squared. What did I do from this step to this step? What's the only thing I did? Changed all the cosine squared thetas into one minus sine squared thetas. Now, look at that expression right there. Is that an expression involving just sine thetas? Everything in here is a sine theta. Now, yes, yeah, some of them are squared and stuff, but does this have just sine thetas in it now? I have achieved what I was setting out to achieve. I wanted to transform that expression, sine of phi theta, into a new expression that had just sine thetas in it. It's a very complicated expression, but it now reduces that five out. So that's why you know I said in the beginning you can't just pull the five out, right? That is a major violation because it is this, right? It's not just five on the outside of that. It's this ugly, nasty thing. All right. Now, I'll be honest with you. This does not come up down the road, Cal uh, 1, Cal 2. You're not going to see this sort of problem. You will, however, see what I'm about to put on the board. All right? But this was a good exercise, I think, in how to use the formulas and replace things, I trying to force ourselves there. Yes? I see it. Yeah? But I need to not do it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I understand that. I understand that. All right, so let's try something a little different. There's a formula that I gave you last class that I have not used very much here. So go and look at the formulas from last class or in your book. Um, they were the power reducing formulas. I believe I gave those to you. But where are they in the book? Okay, yeah, they're in the book on page 657. Maybe I should just jot them up here on the board real quick. Sine squared theta equals one minus cosine two theta over two, which is the same as one half times one minus cosine two theta. The other one was cosine squared theta equals one plus cosine two theta over two, which is the same as one half times one plus cosine two theta. Those are your power reducing formulas. I said to you last class that the advantage of this is that you can take a sine squared and get rid of the power and have a new expression that's no longer squared. But there's a give and a take. What you give up 
is that your new expression is no longer in terms of theta, it's now in terms of two theta. So your argument changes from theta to two theta. Reduce the power, change the argument, right? Okay, so here's what I'd like us to do. Rewrite cosine to the fourth x. Uh, let's do theta, sorry, just to keep things consistent. Cosine to the fourth theta with out any powers on trig functions higher than one. So here's what I'm saying. There is a trigonometric expression. It's cosine theta raised to the fourth power. I'd like for you to rewrite that any way you can using any trig functions you want, but your final answer may not have any trig functions raised to a power greater than one. So you can't have like a cosine squared in your answer or sine squared or a tangent squared. Can't have anything to the third power. Everything's got to be just to the first power. So you can have sines in there and cosines, but nothing higher than that. Understand? All right, so let's start with uh, potentially a formula. The power reducing formula allows us to take cosine squared, right, and reduce the power down, but double the angle. Yeah? So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to rewrite this as cosine squared theta squared. Do you all agree that that's still cosine to the fourth? When you square something that's squared, it's to the fourth? All right, using the power reducing formula, what can I put inside this parenthesis to replace this? I, I can do this, right? Or this. These are the same expressions. I prefer this. Now, just let me show you why I prefer that. I'm going to take 1 half, parentheses 1 plus uh, cosine of 2 theta, and then I'm going to take that and do what with it? The entire thing is going to be squared. So this right here, of course, is that piece right there. And we're having to square the whole thing. That's why I have another set of parentheses out there. OK, is that all good? Now, this is multiplication right here. This 1 half is times everything here, right? When I square this expression, <clears throat> because it's multiplication, I square each one of these. So I square the 1 half, and it becomes 1 fourth. And I square what's in the parentheses, which means I'm going to square what's in the parentheses. I haven't done that yet. All right, I'm going to square that. With me? Let's square it. One fourth is out here. When I square that, be very careful here. That means it's, it's times itself, right? That's what that means. And we have to FOIL. That does not mean you just square each term. You have, to, you have to actually expand this thing out. So I'll have the 1 fourth sitting in front. And then here we go. Let's start expanding. So 1 times 1 is 1. And then 1 times cosine 2 theta is cosine 2 theta. And then cosine 2 theta times 1 is our, the, the inner multiplication. Cosine 2 theta again. And then this last multiplication. Be real careful, but what is that? That last multiplication. It's going to be cosine squared of what? 2 theta. These two are like terms, aren't they? I can put those together. 2 cosine 2 theta. So I have 1 fourth, 1 plus 2 cosine 2 theta, plus
plus cosine squared 2 theta done. Well, done with that step. Questions on that? I'm not done. Why? I still have a squared trig function here, don't I? That's still squared. I'm not allowed to have squareds. Why? Because I told you not to, right? There's a reason why, in, in calculus too, there's a reason why we don't want these things to be squared. It makes something else later easier to do. If there's not a power on it, it much, it's much easier to handle. So I need to take care of that squared still. How can I get rid of that squared? Why don't we just use this formula again? Right? So what happens? Think about this formula. The, the power is going to come down, and what happens to the argument? It doubles, right? The power comes off, the argument doubles. So I can take the power off of this, but the argument is going to double. So the new argument is going to be what? 4 theta, right? It's going to be 4 theta. It's going to double 2 theta. But I, I'll get to that in a second. I want to do one more step before I do that. I'm going to distribute 1 4 through. That's where we are. All I did was I passed 1 4 through here, here, and here. And I just did that because I didn't want to put this new expression like sitting here. I just didn't want to do it. You could have, but I just I preferred not to. So now this piece right here, I'm going to use the formula on. I have 1 4 plus a half cosine 2 theta plus 1 fourth, and then what does that piece come, become? Cosine squared 2 theta becomes not just that. It's oh. all of that, right? So 1 half, one half parentheses, 1 plus cosine 4 theta. Does everyone see that the angle is just doubling? You sure? Right, so like if this were cosine squared of 5 theta, it would become 1 half 1 plus cosine of 5 times 2 theta, 10 theta, right? So whatever the angle is in there, you double it when you apply the formula. I believe at this point we're really kind of there, aren't we? We have 1 fourth plus 1 half cosine 2 theta plus, let's see, what are those together? 1 eighth? 1 eighth? And let's pass the 1 eighth through. So we get 1 eighth plus 1 eighth cosine 4 theta. There's a little bit more work we could do. What's that? Yeah, that is, I mean, we have succeeded. We have taken this and rewritten it without any powers on any trig functions. Do you all agree? We have no more powers. We do have angles that are different now. We've somehow turned thetas into two thetas and four thetas, but this is an equivalent expression. The only thing left that I would do is I would put the one-fourth and the one-eighth together. That would become three-eighths, and then just rewrite everything else. But. So in calculus, too, you have to be able to do that. It's just part of a bigger problem that you're trying to do. Are there any questions? Sure. Wow, OK. We have eaten up a lot of time today. That's OK. Let's do this. Let's hold off on the sum and product formulas. Let's just hold off for now. Let's do some identities. I want to I want to get y'all working. So let's break into groups like we did that one time. Form your own groups. Do we have a textbook within each group? That's that's I need to make sure that we have a textbook within each group. 
And let's do this. Um, hmm. Do you think groups of four is too big or? Okay, four is the max. But I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give each group as many problems as there are people. And each person has to write one of the answers out. Okay, so every single person needs to write something on the board today. Neatly, legibly, and correct, hopefully. We'll see. But you can all work together first on the problems. So is there a book in every, every group? Anybody not have a book? We're going to do the homework problems. That's what we're going to do. OK? Yes? It's going to be zero today. I'm sorry about that. No, it's OK. Let me put the problems up first. And then I will um, I'll let you borrow my book. All right, so we're going to be working off of, let's see, let's name our groups here. This group A, B, C, D. So A, B, C, D. And gold? Gold and gold. OK. Got to be different, right? All right. So let's see here. We're going to be working off of two pages. Page 653 and page 663. Let's start with the ones off 653 first. OK, here we go. So group A, you're going to do 51. Group B, 53. 52, 54, and 57. Then. We're going to do 59, 61, 63, 62, oh, 69. Okay, that should, that should be enough to get you all started right now. While you're doing that, I'll write the rest up here. Does everyone understand what you're supposed to do? Uh, group A, yeah? I might need that in a second, but I'll go ahead with that. What are you going to do? You can join a group? Come over here. Those guys are pretty nice, from what I can tell. So all the formulas are, are fair game for these problems, right? All the formulas. So just keep in mind what section you're in. That'll kind of give you some indication as to what formulas to use. As you finish the problems, go ahead and send the person up to the board to write it out. There should be markers all around the room. You all know what you're doing? Yes? Identities, start with one side, turn it into the other. 
These are identities. Start with the left side, turn it into the right side, or start with the right side, turn it into the left side. You are not allowed to work on both sides of the equation at the same time.